Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. Hope you're enjoying your life. I just want to let you know that I love you guys so much. I missed you over the long holiday weekends. We had Friday and Monday off, which apparently is how the rest of the world does it, but not in America. Tell you what, we take Sundays off when it's Sunday holiday and no extra days, okay? That's, I'm, a little bitter that everybody else didn't come into work. Anyways, two quick things, my friend. You can check out UFD Deals, which is our website where you can find the best tech deals on the internet. You click on the link, it takes you to Amazon or wherever that's having the sale. You save money, we make money because it's an affiliate program and everybody wins at the end of the day. Number two, we have a couple new channels that you can subscribe to if you're at all interested. One is a hot news channel, which is where we're gonna cover topics that uh, maybe won't get covered here in the main video as well as trying to do some deeper dives and just hot takes and even uh, quicker video output than what we have here on the main channel. And eventually the idea is that we might transition hot news all away from this channel altogether and just kind of keep this for more of the like fun, actual tech product stuff. But that's in the future right now because the channel's not even monetized. So like we're not making money off of it. And so we can't say what the plans are anyways. But then we also have two new podcasts that we've launched, which you can subscribe to their YouTube channel. If you're at all interested, we have random access which is uh, our interview podcast where I am going to interview content creators both here in South Africa as well as abroad and just kind of get their perspective on what it means to actually uh, produce stuff for the internet. We're going to try to focus on tech creators primarily, but uh, we'll, we'll cover anybody and everybody that I'm interested in. And then secondly, we have the High Bandwidth podcast, which is basically like hot news, but an hour long and with me, Reese and Rickus and just kind of discussing stuff. And it's more, uh, more fun than just kind of getting all of the information. So yeah, if you're at all interested in those things, you can check it out at the link in the video description or subscribe to them if you're at all interested. And with that being said, that's a long enough ad spot, but good thing I put timestamps in the description and in the pinned comment so that you can skip ahead if you're not at all interested in this ever. So let's go ahead and talk about other things that are yielding a whole lot more stuff. Mm -hmm. See that transition there? UFD tech yielding new channels, AMD yielding CPU stuff. So everybody is super excited for Ryzen 3000 to come out as except for Intel who's probably uh, just kind of watching their doom happen and unfold before their eyes but you know what there's still some like new technology that has to be worked out with these new Zen 2 chips I mean AMD is doing some new stuff like adding chiplets and having an IO die things that weren't ever happening on a mainstream CPU before and it's actually come out that the yield that AMD is actually getting on their production of the Zen 2 chips is quite good indeed in fact according to a report from bits and chips that the Zen Zen 2 die production is at a 70% yield. It's actually really remarkable when you compare it to Intel's yield rates on their high core count CPUs and the ones that uh, you know try to compete with AMD on the higher end. Their Cascade Lake, the 28 core CPU that they have, is actually a 35% yield rate. So Zen 2 actually at double the yield rate of what Intel's able to do on their high end desktop chips, which could mean that we actually might indeed see some cheaper CPUs than what Intel can produce in high core counts. Obviously, we're already seeing that with the Ryzen setup, but this could mean that the new development is actually something that could be affordable. However, uh, these yield rates actually aren't as good as what AMD is currently experiencing on Zen Plus, but the thing that makes them remarkable is that this is a brand new process that Zen 2 is going to be based on. It's on 7 nanometers, whereas Zen Plus is based on 12 nanometers and has been a known entity in the game for quite some time. So if 70% is the initial yield on Zen 2 with seven nanometer production. It can only happen that it will likely get more efficient as time goes on and we'll see a drop in price on AMD's chips in the future or on you know the Ryzen 3000 series in a year, we could actually see some pretty hot sales, which is not something that AMD has been unknown to do. The Ryzen 2000 series chips are constantly on sale at this point for them to push them out before they launch the new CPUs. And then this segue is really good into a fantastic deal that's on Amazon right now. At this moment, if you want a six core 12 thread Ryzen 5 1600, I know it's first generation, I know third generation is coming out, but for a Ryzen 5 1600, it is only $120 on Amazon. 
That is insane. That is so cheap. It's $190 MSRP. It comes with a cooler, six cores, 12 threads, probably overclockable to about four gigahertz. This is a steal. So if you're at all interested in picking up the Ryzen 5 1600, we have an Amazon affiliate link in the video description in case you uh, maybe just want to spend the least amount of money possible. And I mean, $120 for a six core 12 thread processor, even if the rumors are true for Ryzen 3000 and the Ryzen 3 chips are six core 12 thread processors, I doubt they're gonna be much cheaper than that. So you're actually really like, you're not sacrificing a whole lot, maybe some clock speed if you go with that and AMD does happen to release the things that they're rumored to. It's a good pickup right now. Maybe even just buy it for your secondary PC. I don't know, you're, you're all balling and money, cash, cash, dollar. Anyways, let's talk about who else is balling and cash, cash, money, dollar. This doesn't make any sense. AMD is celebrating their 50th anniversary uh, on May the 3rd in Ontario. I made a joke at the last hot news about me being anti-Canadian and it's a joke. I mean, who really actually cares about the frost giants to the North who's only exported maple syrup? Who cares, all right? All right, nobody cares about Canada, except for the people who do, and then comment. Anyways, so it actually looks like that we are getting a 50th anniversary edition of the Radeon 7, as well as the 2700X. We knew about the 2700X, but now there's a promotional image attached with this. It looks like it's probably gonna be a golden edition of the Radeon 7, as well as a golden edition of the 2700X. No words yet as to whether or not there's gonna be increased clock speed or anything of the sort, but there's a launch date of April 29th, so in about a week, we actually will be getting brand new card and CPU you from AMD, even though we're expecting Ryzen 3000 to come out in a couple of months. Anyways, in case you want a piece of history, AMD 50th anniversary stuff coming out soon, my friends. And in case you bet on the AMD horse way back when, when Vega first launched two years ago now, maybe a year and a half, I actually can't remember, doesn't matter. Well, apparently now with some Vulcan titles that are coming out, like War, War, World War Z, or World War Z, depending on what country you're living in, uh, the Vulcan API makes it so that the Vega 64 actually beats the RTX 2080 Ti, the fastest NVIDIA GPU getting demolished by the Vega 64. Radeon 7 also put in some heavy tests there. This is of course because AMD bets on uh, just brute force compute and AM NVIDIA likes to kind of specialize their stuff. And then when you have a developer who actually builds their games for AMD, you see performance gains like this, which means that people in the comments will ever forever say that the Vega 64 was the better choice over the GTX 1080. But but I mean, if you have to endure two years of lower frame rate to get a couple more years of better frame rate, I don't know who's right. Some people like to sacrifice now, some people like to sacrifice never and just buy a new card every year. The world keeps on spinning. And then let's talk about the opposite end, which is the cheap stuff that AMD produces. The Ryzen 3 20 3200G, which is their APU chip, has actually been found. It looks like they're still gonna be gluing together the APUs and it actually has been delitted. So in case you're at all interested in the 3200G and probably the 3400G, which is likely to come out, you can check the link in the video description for these Raven Ridge APUs. Not Raven Ridge. No, it is Raven Ridge. It's a derivative of Raven Ridge. And then we talked about last week how uh, Sony sat down in an interview with Wired about the PlayStation 5 and the specs that they're expecting to have there, such which is a Zen 2 eight core CPU, a Navi GPU. And there's an analyst who's come out now saying, oh yeah, I know a lot about it. So it's actually gonna be based on the Ryzen 3600G and it's gonna cost $400. That's according to Smithers. Smithers, Pelham Smithers. Pelham Smithers Associate Research Firm. Smithers, I'm gonna Mr. Burns you. Excellent. Obviously, this could just be a guesstimation based on uh, hot news that's out there and they're just trying to get their research firm name out there on top of the news, piggybacking on that, in which case, good job, you definitely did it. But uh, I'm not necessarily sure you're gonna get $400 for the specs that they're quoting, especially with the SSD that they're supposed to be uh, covering. Anyways, we did a dedicated hot news video on that right up there if you wanna check that out about the PlayStation 5's SSD and how uh, they're saying it's gonna be world changing. But you know what else is world changing? Microsoft's Windows 10 updates, because apparently the latest update, if you happen to update to it, if you open a file that has the extension of .csv, which is very common for a whole bunch of different setups, uh, it's gonna lock up your computer and you're gonna have to force restart it. So uh, don't update or update as long as you don't use CSVs, but if you use a CSV, you're screwed. Sorry, friends. 
But thankfully, Microsoft said that they're gonna stop with the force rollout and they're gonna allow you to choose. Anyways, you know who's gonna stop with the rollout as well, or at least delay it? Samsung, got them, Galaxy Fold, tons of issues. We talked about this last week, how they're breaking. They're not doing so great. The little screen protector that they didn't tell reviewers shouldn't come off was being ripped off and peeling off and it's a bad news bear because it destroys the screen. Anyways, they're delaying it and uh, no release date in sight. Even though they sold out of the pre-orders for the $2,000 smartphone, it looks like uh, it could be a red hydrogen titanium situation where it, it, it'll come out eventually, but when you get it, is it really what you wanted in the first place? Probs not. We'll have to see if Huawei actually comes out with their Mate X. Might suffer from some of the same issues, might not. Let's wait and see. But you know what you don't have to wait and see? as long as you have $70,000. Sony's brand new 98 inch 8K TV. My goodness, that is, I just, I want it. I want it. I wish we had Papa Linus's view numbers so that I could afford this. And we would just put it behind me on the hot new set and we would fake the outside. Instead of having a real outside with like clouds and stuff, we could, I could be in the beach right now and the TV would be big enough to encompass the set and make it seem like I'm actually at the beach. That's what I would use that for. Probably not the best use case of $70,000, but it would work. You know what else works? Facebook spilling out passwords because it's been revealed that uh, millions of Instagram passwords were exposed in just yet another security compromise by Facebook and yet another issue. Not only can they not keep their servers up, not only are they storing like 600 million passwords in plain text, they're also getting uh, Instagram passwords now also published in plain text. This is ridiculous. This is what happens when we trust our entire lives to corporations. Our passwords become meaningless and we all turn into one giant globular conglomerate of ooze. By the way, speaking of that, saying that weird sentence reminded me of a Twitter post that MSI did of their new motherboards. What the heck are you thinking? It's disgusting. Look at this. Why? It's just flabby naked men flying into their motherboards. I don't get it. Who at MSI approved this? No idea. Dumb move, but you got me talking about it and I'm disgusted by it. Ugh. And then in case you love recycling, so does Apple because they're opening up a new recycling facility in Texas. And Apple has been known to be making great strides into trying to use recyclable material into their uh, products that they actually make, trying to use 100% recycled tin as well as 100% recycled aluminum for the unibody chassis on their MacBooks. It's actually a great in initiative by them. And uh, in case you want to know more, link in the description. And then in case you thought Microsoft was all bad news and in case you thought Windows 10 was just spyware and the company just wants to sell your data like Facebook, well, you'd be wrong, my friends, because it uh, apparently Microsoft has just rejected a California law enforcement agency when it comes to actually allowing them to use their facial recognition software because Microsoft was like, wait, hold on. You guys are gonna abuse people with this, aren't you? Yeah, we can't let you use it. So Microsoft denying them over human rights concerns which is kind of intriguing. Anyways, they said that it would lead to innocent women and minorities being disproportionately held for questioning because the artificial intelligence has been trained on mostly white and male pictures. So even the patriarchy getting in on AI training for facial recognition, at least Microsoft recognizes this and they're not rolling it out willy nilly where this could actually cause some issues. So big props to them. Uh, even if they can't get their Windows 10 update sorted, they're at least not trying to sell you out to the government. I think that's the takeaway we can have here. And I'm gonna take away that ending and say that's the end of hot news. Uh, actually, the hot news is so hot that I burnt my fingers. I don't know if this is gonna show up very clearly or maybe I should put it here for the focal plane. But uh, apparently the oven in the new office also turns on one of the burners and my fingers got hot newsed into second degree burns. That's how hot it is here. I hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to our new channels in case you're interested. All of them are linked in the video description. Check out UFD deals if you're trying to save money. Buy the Ryzen 5 1600X, 1600 if you're at all interested. And that's it. Hit the like button. I'm Brett. Love you too. Bye. My fingers hurt.